Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe video and our Advice and Insights podcast. I'm doubling up and recording both right now just to save time, and also it's the very end of the year, and also markets go up and down like 500 points a second these days, so got to do what I have to do. I really didn't want to have to record one this week. I thought we'd take the week off um, in between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, but the fact of the matter is there was no way. There's so much going on in markets right now. We're kind of working around the clock right now, as you can imagine. So here, here's the update of things happening with the markets. I'm recording right now, midday on Thursday. We're down about 400 points in the Dow. We are closed on Tuesday for Christmas. But on Monday, Christmas Eve, it was only a half day. We were down about 650 points. And that came on after Friday. We were down 500 plus points last week. And then on um, Wednesday, yesterday, the day after Christmas, the Dow was up 1,100 points, just a little bit shy of 1,100 points, which was the biggest point day higher in the history of the market. It wasn't the biggest percentage day, but it was up 5% in a day. So actually, as I sit here right now, we're like basically flat on the week, down 650 down 400 but then up 1100 we might be up you know 100 points or or something total when we net it out now we'll see how the rest of thursday plays out and we'll see how friday goes and then we're gonna have another half day in the market on monday december 31 the market will close at 10 a.m pacific 1 p.m eastern for new year's eve day and then we can close the book on 2018 but with um, what amounts to two and a half days of trading still to go, it's a little too early to say exactly how December will finish and, of course, how 2018 will finish. But right now, where we sit, it's safe to say that the Dow and S&P are both down over 11% from their all-time, uh, no, excuse me, from their, their peak level uh, earlier in December. Um we got within a whisker of being down 20% in the S&P from its closing high level back in September to its closing low level on Monday of this week. It didn't technically get to the 20%. So some will say we averted or avoided that bear market level, but I don't, I don't really know how, who cares. You know, you're a couple points away, whatever. Fact of the matter is, I certainly do believe we're an awful lot closer to a bottom than we were to a top but I wouldn't dare time that. I say that based on a number of reasons. This is not recessionary-driven bear market. This is a, uh, a fear-driven bear market that has come from an unwinding of an overpriced tech trade in an environment of quantitative tightening from the Federal Reserve, in an environment of really significant policy error around a trade war and an imposition of tariffs on an economy that was otherwise humming resulting in a suppression of business confidence, business investment, business spending, capital expenditures that the market now fears will hold in check productivity and therefore profit growth into the future. And I think when you look at this kind of milieu of circumstances, it, it makes sense why markets would have checked back a bit. Now, why you end up with an S&P at a forward multiple of 14, 14 and a half times, very low multiple relative to historical valuation for a non-recessionary environment, it's surreal. Global economic conditions are not good. They're particularly horrific in Europe and China. Uh, the U.S. has had plenty of periods where the rest of the world was not looking pretty and the U.S. navigated through it. This may prove not to be one of those. 2019 will give that verdict. But right now, rather than kind of delve into the exhaustive analysis of what 2019 holds and what one needs to be thinking about considering going into that period, I will simply say that I'm looking at high yield bond spreads to determine if credit is about to get cut off from the US economy. So far, both with investment grade credit, the levered loan market, high yield bond spreads, they've all widened. They've all demonstrated that there's weakness in the corporate economy, as you would expect with the Dow dropping 3,000 points in three weeks. But they're not indicating spread levels that are, are suggesting credit is getting cut off from the corporate economy. Um, the sentiment was pretty poor, and it's gotten a lot poorer, and I consider that a very bullish thing. 
Uh, I'm a contrarian to my bones, and I do not believe the masses get this stuff right ever. I just think the question is how much time it takes to reveal that. But you really have not had a historical bear market come from a point, a starting point of weakness and doubt and trepidation and fear. Generally, you have one come out of significant doubt, excuse me, euphoria and excitement and, and uh, irrational overconfidence. What um, January will hold, I don't know. I, a lot of parallels I'm going to be talking about in our kind of uh, tw early 2019. We're going to do a white paper in the big video and podcast and all that type of stuff where I elaborate on this. We're going to have you know PDF we're going to want to send to you, but but look, here's what I'm getting at. August, September 1998 and January 2016 have a lot in common what's going on now. Global condition, it happened very quickly. Uh, Fed response, commodity price weakness, and then there was just a sort of immediate V-shaped reversal. Um, the issues right now that are, are concerning to markets have gotten worse than I would have expected, and they certainly happened quicker than anybody would have expected. And I'm not willing to say that I know for sure everything's gonna reverse in a week or two or three. I am sure that from an asset allocator standpoint, it is a good time to be revisiting asset allocations, reviewing opportunities to perhaps tweak around the edges of where you wanna put a little more risk on in the portfolio, or maybe you wanna change some of the risks. Um, I, there's a number of different things that I think someone may want to consider. What I don't think people should be doing is buying hand over fist. I think that they can be taking advantage of equities they've wanted to add in the portfolio, wanted to add more of, that have just gotten lower in price and be purchasing there within an asset allocation appropriate to those uh, particular investor circumstances. I also believe it is nowhere near a chance to become Mr. Market Timer to believe that you're gonna kinda of go to the sidelines and then you'll come back in and when things are better, which is always an odd idea to me, um, selling so that you can then buy back higher later. The fact of the matter is just sort of being able to time things a little bit. Um, an 1100 point increase in one day is a painful day to miss. Um, now a 600 point down day is a wonderful day to not miss, uh, to be out of the way of. But the point being, I don't believe anyone's going to be able to get it that exactly right. I don't think there's any clarity in the markets of what they're going to do the rest of today or tomorrow or Monday. And so these little one day, two day, and one week and two week horizons are wholly inappropriate for anyone other than a reckless gambler. What we're trying to do is invest client capital and the behavioral conditions necessary to do that optimally are to be patient, to be slow and sober-minded in the way one approaches what is happening in markets and why, and then to be opportunistic where appropriate around that. Um, but temperamentally, the notion of being rash one way or the other, I think right now is as fatal as anything I could explain. So there's a lot more in DividendCafe.com this week. I'm really actually proud of this week's Dividend Cafe. I think we unpacked a lot around emerging markets, around high yield, around the Fed and the risks with their continued quantitative tightening um, that are taking place in the economy. So read DividendCafe.com if you really want to get excited for your New Year's Eve. Nothing says New Year's Eve party like Dividend Cafe. With all that said, it's a brutal week. Reach out to us with any questions. Um, do your very best to enjoy your New Year's. I don't know why this stuff should impact your New Year's at all. I do know why it impacts our New Year's, but this is our job, but we get paid for it. In the meantime, I hope you've had a wonderful 2018, a wonderful Christmas week. We look forward to come back to you with another update in the market next week, uh, which will be about January 3rd, January 4th. And then the week after, we're going to present a very holistic recap of 2018 and a preview for 2019. Thanks for listening to Advice and Insights and watching The Dividend Cafe.